All right, there we go. What is going on, Mike? How are you doing today? Good, man. How are you? Super excited to be here. Yeah, I'm excited to have you. This is a, a, a rare treat, uh, the fact that we get you live on the air right here on YouTube. So excited to, to be able to do this with you and also just catch up with you, man. It's, it's uh, you know, for those that don't know, you and I, you know, we've known each other now for a little while, had a chance to kind of hang out and, and uh, do some stuff at some events. And uh, it's always been good, you know, getting to just kind of, you know, learn a little bit more about the, the, you know, what goes on in the background, because dude, I know how hard you work um, to build what you've built. Um, and so, you know, everything you've done, you've earned it. And uh, so I'm honored to have you on this call. I'm excited for you to, you know, be able to share uh, just some, some social media stuff uh, with the, with the audience and the agents here watching, which we've already got. I'm already looking at the ticker here. We got a lot of people tuning in already. So, uh, so yeah, guys, if you're tuning in and you want to say hi to Mike, let him know in the comments here. And uh, we are going to do some FAQs at the end. So if you do have questions for Mike, feel free to type them in the chat in the comments and we'll get to them at the end. Um, so if I don't get to them right away, we will get to them though at the end. But before we do all that, Mike, how are you doing, man? Good. I'm, I'm excited to be here again. You know, as you alluded to, we've known each other for so long and, you know, we've got a collab coming on my channel soon and then we, we get to do this together. And I think it's cool, um, you know, being able to connect with other people that are in a very similar space, but maybe a different niche. Um, and again, like even though at the same brokerage, being able to collaborate, you know, across borders is so powerful and exciting. And and we've got a lot to dive into today with all the changes that have happened this year. And and uh, I'm excited and, and we've got a great community that I think uh, know the both of us. So it should be pretty fun. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Well, cool. Well, for those of us, you know, watching, maybe they're tuning in on, you know, Facebook or I'm, this is even streaming on LinkedIn right now. And maybe they haven't come across, you know, your YouTube channel or anything, you know, um, let everybody know real quick, you know, who are you? Uh, how did, how did you kind of get your start and what does your business look like today? Yeah, definitely. So up here in Calgary, Alberta, Canada, the Northern neighbor to uh, many of you, I'm assuming, and, uh, you know, I got into real estate 2017 and uh, new agent, new city, didn't know anybody, quit engineering um, and, and again, had no money. So I built my business on door knocking in the beginning. Um, you know, I got licensed in February of 2017. So it was, you know, minus 10 snowing. And, uh, you know, I went out door knock three hours a day, every day for six months straight. And, uh, you know, the first day I got licensed, I went out and door knocked, um, and within my first evening, it was snowing, minus 10, in a suit, in the dark. And I ended up getting two listings at $700,000 a pop on um, my very first day licensed. And I did really well with door knocking. So it was it was great and it, and it helped develop skills. But the problem was is that it didn't create leverage. So my business was only growing the three hours a day that I was putting time into the business and right. not the rest of the time. So about six months into it, I started looking at, uh, you know, social media and using that as an avenue where if you didn't have money, you had time. And if you invest your time wisely, you can create income. And that's when I started diving into things like Facebook ads and uh, Instagram built the top producing business. My first year was the top producer at my past brokerage for multiple years. And, um, you know, it was, it was really exciting, but ultimately realized that, you know, as I started to build momentum, I started realizing other agents wanted to know how to do the same thing. So I ultimately started sharing my strategies on door knocking, cold calling, Facebook ads, Instagram, personal branding, and things like that, kind of like a blanket fit across all social platforms. And then people really wanted to know more about the Facebook strategies. So that kind of was the birth of my YouTube channel where I kind of just said, hey, here's everything that I've personally done, no fluff, no BS, no theory, but practice. And a lot of people really cared about door knocking, but more so Facebook and Instagram. And that's what kind of birthed my niche into the social media space. 
I just gave people what they wanted more of. And, you know, fast forward a few years later, we're kind of here now. Um, we've, we've got a channel that's growing and uh, ranking number one for almost every social platform related to real estate on YouTube. Yeah, man, it's crazy. So so when did your yeah. journey on uh, YouTube begin? You said uh, like 2000, was it 19 or 20? Yeah, it was It kind of, I was put into two, two different buckets because I put my first video out in 2017. And there's still a couple of videos out there from that. But, you know, in 2017, it took me a year to get to 167 subscribers. <laughs> and then, in, you know, and in 2018, I went to like 300. And I really started taking it seriously in 2019. And okay. that's when that was when I was my third year. I tripled my production every year. But I started realizing maybe there's a different avenue because I got sick and tired of chasing the next deal like every agent yeah. eventually gets to. Mine just happened to be a bit more soon than the average agent. Um, so 2019, I ended up doing you know, 42, 43 deals, but simultaneously putting out three videos a week that I was editing wow. myself, filming myself, doing the thumbnails yeah. myself on Canva, the whole nine yards. Yeah. And that's when I went from like 167 to 3,000 subscribers and realized, well, maybe I have something here. Yeah, that's so cool, man. And now today you're what over seventy thousand, or pretty close to it. Uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. So seventy seven thousand now. Yeah, yeah. Almost um, eighty thousand. Holy, so I can't even keep up, man. Like I, <laughs> I check, and I'm like, I, I know he's over fifty, he's over sixty. It's going so fast now. So, yeah, yeah. that's awesome, dude. Congrats, man. Well, I know how much work it put it takes. Trust me, because like three videos a week, uh, that's that's by no means easy, especially when you're still selling and doing all sorts of other stuff. So, uh, very cool. And I think that kind of segues us into you know, kind of what I wanted to, you know, uh, talk to you about today, which, you know, is a lot of social media stuff. And really, I'd love to start out with because I know you do a lot of like coaching of agents and kind of like helping them with their social media presence. And, and social media can mean a lot of things, whether it's, you know, YouTube or, you know, Instagram, TikTok, all sorts of different stuff. But like, if you have an agent who, you know, comes to you and let's just say that, you know, they're on social media, but like they haven't sold anything because of it or like, you know, it hasn't been a big presence in their business, their real estate business. Like, like what are some things that you would tell them they need to do right away? Like first and say like, yeah. hey, I know you already got a profile, but like, like what are some of the biggest things that people need to take advantage of right away? Yeah, definitely. The first one's a bit unorthodox. And honestly, it's made the biggest difference in my content, which is taking a very unbiased approach and looking at your content through an unbiased lens. So for example, whenever I'm putting out a video, I've, I've put out 467 videos on my YouTube channel, I've put out a, a ton of content, I still rewatch 100% of every single video I put out there before it goes live. I still look at every single thumbnail and before the video goes live, I put it beside the top three ranking thumbnails for that subject and say, if I wasn't me, if I didn't know who I was through a hole in the wall, would I honestly click on my own thumbnail or theirs? Would I honestly watch my own video or would I watch theirs? Or, you know, on Instagram, if I look at a piece of content from myself or somebody else, I always use that litmus test and that barometer of saying, you know, if this video, this reel or whatever landed in front of me, would I like it? Would I go so far as to comment? Would I share it? Would I save it? Would I follow you? Would I go to your account? Because the average person unfortunately thinks that because they know there's value in the content, they make the assumption that other people are going to as well, but they don't really look at how engaging is it? How well is it delivered? How entertaining is it? Mm -hmm. And they look through a bias lens of knowing themselves, not looking at the average person, because if you're trying to grow like you're following to grow your following, it's all new people who don't know you. Right. So the way you have to look at it is, would somebody who did not know Mike Shard or Kyle Handy and didn't know all the videos and the content they put out, if they found that for the first time, would they engage? And when you could start to look through that unbiased lens, it, and I do this with advertising all the time as well, paid lead mm -hmm. generation ads, that starts to put yourself in the shoes of the consumer. And when you can put yourself in the shoes of the consumer, now you're creating content based on consumer behavior. And if you would act that way unbiasedly, so would everybody else. So that's usually my first plan of action is get, get because the average agent is, you know, more or less hopefully driven. And knowing that they're always going to be their own harshest critic. So yep. whenever I'm talking to an agent, I don't even go down the rabbit hole if I'm doing like a channel audit and be like, you're doing this wrong, you're doing this wrong. I get them to answer their own questions because they know where they're going wrong. They just don't sometimes take the time to step back and ask those questions to themselves. 
Yeah, 100%. Um, well, cool. So then I think, you know, then the other thing that I get and like, uh, you know, and even me, man, I struggle with this sometimes is like, you know, where should I pour my efforts? I and mean, we all only have the same amount of time in the day. And yeah. like at the beginning, you know, I mean, yeah, it's great. Like at some point where you can build leverage, but you know, right out the gate, not a lot of people may be good at like managing a team or, you know, even like building the systems to get going. So like they have to kind of do the work themselves, you know, just like you did, just like I do. And like, so with limited time, um, knowing, Hey, like, you know, you see a lot of agents, you've got a lot of agents in your group here at EXP. Like what are the agents that are successful in real estate doing, um, you know, to actually get real deals today on social media? Yeah, definitely. I think, you know, the reality of that answer is something that not many people really want to hear, but it all comes down to priorities, right? So when you start looking at this, yes, we're all busy. Yes, you know, it's very difficult to, to put it into the play. If you've got prospecting time, you've got kids, you've got a spouse, you've got all this kind of stuff. But at the end of the day, there's a principle that everybody needs to live by, which is you will always make time for your priorities. If you're not making time for social media, it is not a priority. If you're not making time for, you know, uh, prospecting, it is not a priority. So it's a mismanagement of priorities. And I think that's where, you know, you look at the time. It just depends how you allocate that time. But also, how diligent are you being within that constraint that you've placed for the time that you've allotted to the content? And I think... For me, it's been finding efficiencies, like batching my content and doing it in a way that I can get a month's worth done in one session. But then there's also agents in my organization like Louie, and he didn't find batching work for him because of kids and wife and school and this. And he blocked off a one hour time slot once a day, seven days a week, and he records one video a day. And that's what works wow. for him. So I think it's ultimately looking at your own life and this is where a lot of agents kind of get tripped up, I think, is like they're watching my videos, they're watching your videos, and they're looking for the perfect content calendar. But you, me, and the next person all live drastically different lives. We yep. have different priorities. So you have to try a bunch of things and see what actually fits within your lifestyle. Because the best content calendar, the best prioritization is going to be what you are going to be consistent with for the next 12 months. It's not what I tell you or what somebody else tells you. It's what will you stay true to? And ultimately, that's one of the biggest mistakes I think people find with their content. But also, the preparation is a huge thing. And I think if you, you know, typical quote, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail, typical yep. stuff. But it, it, there's a lot of weight behind that because like yep. for me, I plan three months in advance. If you're in the beginning of your journey, plan one month in advance. Yep. And I think the more you can be prepared, that allows you to sit down and say, okay, like I'm recording this weekend because I batch every Saturday. Well, I know all the videos I'm going to record. So I have to sit down, I crank it out and I'm done. Where a lot of agents go wrong and say, I'm going to record this Saturday, but then they sit down and say, okay, well, what the heck am I going to record? And what am I going to say in those videos? And they block off three hours and two hours into it, they haven't recorded anything because they've been doing the research, but that can all be done ahead of time. And then I think the final thing is that a lot of agents overcomplicate the recording process in terms of what they should record. And I think this is always funny because I get, I'm sure you get this all the time too, which is people saying, well, Mike or Kyle, like, I don't know what videos I should record. And I'm like, what do you mean? You don't know what videos you should record. How many communities are in San Antonio? Oh, 150. Great. There's 150 community tours you have yep. to go do. Yep. Oh, great. How many properties are in your market that you can get access to? 30? Great. There's 30 property tours. Oh, you've got the list of videos that you've shared on your channel. I've shared on my channel. You have a month's worth of content or a year's worth of content that you yep. already know, like the back of your hand, yep. but you're looking for some like secret sauce video <laughs> that you should start with. Just go start with anything. Just exactly. get going. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. I hear that all the time too. And it's just one of those things where you just got to get going and then like, you know, and I, and I, I create plans and then the plans get me started. But then once yeah. what's funny is once you get started, you realize like now, like you might, you might divert from your, you might do something different because you're in it. Now you're in it every yeah. day. You're seeing it. You're seeing opportunities. Whereas if you're trying to see the opportunities, like from the outside, you'll never get it. You know what I mean? You got to be in it to see those opportunities. So yeah. Yeah, no, that's awesome, man. I love it. Uh, on the advertising side, because, you know, I know you, you got a lot of videos, you know, about Facebook ads and, and you know, Google ads, I think even. Um, but like on the advertising side, I know so many things are changing constantly I mean, they are all over the place, but especially with ads, where are you seeing 
agents have the biggest ses- success with ads, whether it's like Facebook ads, Instagram ads, Google PPC, YouTube ads. I mean, like what, what type of advertising are you seeing working right now? Yeah, definitely. So it's a great question. It's changing like crazy. It's yeah. This is also why, you know, I always urge people to focus on, you know, blogs like you do or YouTube videos like we both do which mm-hmm. is things that create massive leverage that you don't have to pay for that could scale over time that aren't subject as much yeah. to algorithmic changes. But there is a lot to say about paid ads. I spent about $1.2 million in 2022 on paid ads. So I'm a huge advocate for it, but there's kind of different buckets here. So when we start looking at some of the paid ad strategies that are working now, you kind of have to shift your perspective because I think where a lot of people went wrong is they make this assumption that there's the perfect ad that works in every market for every agent every time that no matter what the situation is you will be able to crank out hot bottom of funnel leads with that ad but that does not exist so what we're seeing now is a couple different things if you're focusing on maybe my recommendation to start is a facebook ad not because it's going to get you the highest quality leads not because it's the highest converting but because it will give you the most repetitions when it comes to understanding how to follow up with online leads and i think that's a skill set that a lot of agents have to develop understanding that the average online lead might convert after you know six eight twelve months and most people aren't used to that skill set it's an extremely valuable skill set, whether you're focused on production or attraction. But when we start looking at some of the ads that do convert the best, there's kind of two different approaches here. There's content that is specifically tailored toward lead conversion. And then there's content that I really focus on, which is the one that most people struggle with, which is brand awareness. And I think where a lot of people go wrong is they think that if they're spending $50 a week or $50 a day, whatever it is on ads, they want to see an immediate return. But that's not always the play. And I think a concept that I wish people would better understand is return on ad spend. So for example, I will see, let's say the average price point in your market yields an $8,000 commission. Well, I will see agents go out there and spend $500 500 or $600 on Facebook ads, not get a closed deal yet and say, you know what, Mike, Facebook ads ain't worth it. It's not worth it for me. I'm going to go to Google ads or YouTube at whatever. Well, dude, like if I could spend five, $600 and get an $8,000 commission, I'd be a billionaire by the end of the year. I'd spend as much money as possible. Yeah. That's not how it works. Like the average investor, the average entrepreneur looks for a two and a half to three times return on ad spend. So you should be willing to spend up to $2,500 to get an $8,000 commission and be happy with that. Yeah. But they're looking at the immediate, not the long-term play. Yeah. And that also goes to the advertising side where agents struggle with understanding the process of how you actually have to run high converting ads, which is I look at month one is gathering data. I yeah. do not expect any results for months one. Mm-hmm. It's just to gather data. Month two is optimization. Month three is scaling. So it's a three month process, but most people want that perfect ad week one, not month three. Now, when it comes to ads that are working in 2023, couple of different things as we talked about. The first is going to be for lead conversion. That to me, based on my experience, has been Google ads focused on buyers and then YouTube ads focused on either or. Okay. Now, the problem is, is a lot of people say, well, I want to just focus on sellers. But if you look at doing ads specifically tailored toward like relocation or downsizing mm-hmm. or upsizing, well, you ha- you're a seller before you're a buyer. Right, right. So... It, you know, when people are spending all this time trying to get in front of sellers and saying, I only want to do listings, well, you're going to spend an arm and a leg to get listing leads. If you focus on buyer leads that are specifically tailored towards buyers who probably are already owners, that gives you a massive competitive advantage. And then I think the last thing, which is on the brand awareness side, is something nobody's doing, which is what I just put out a video on my channel about, I think, a week ago or so, is TikTok ads. Nobody's doing it. The cost per um, you know lead, very similar to Facebook ads back in 2019 or 2017, 2018, and nobody's doing it. So yeah. if you go learn how to do something that nobody else in your market's doing, it becomes a competitive advantage. That to me has been TikTok ads, but there's a nuance that I'll wrap it up with, which is that when you look at leveraging something that is a massive competitive advantage like TikTok ads, TikTok is a bit different 
than every other advertising platform. So on Facebook, we are used to scrolling and seeing an ad, a sponsored right. post. Like we have become familiar with that. TikTok kind of came into the picture after people have become used to that and realize they don't want that anymore, which is when Facebook changes privacy rules. Right. So the TikTok ads that work the best, which I tested over the course of the last 12 months, are the ones that look native to the platform that have a call to action at the end, not the beginning. Mm. A lot of advertising formats like YouTube ads for videos, mm -hmm. Instagram and Facebook ads with videos, the call to actions like right at the jump right and then you yep. get into the value because yep. people are no people are familiar with it being an ad right whereas on tiktok if it's an ad off the jump they're like okay scroll they're so used to scrolling not stopping so if you do something that hooks people it seems like it's a native video like you know for example in a real estate example you say something like you know there's um you know here's what happened with interest rates in in san antonio but there's three things you need to know and you break down the three things and then at the end you have a call to action saying by the way if you want to know you know how much your home would be worth in this market now you do the call to action at the end they already watched the full video because it seemed like native value to the platform you convert on the end not the mm -hmm. beginning so it's a massive opportunity you just have to have a bit of a perspective shift of how to actually apply it Gotcha. Dude, that, that's super powerful, man. Like just not only just like the specific example, but like even just like the, uh, the, the mindset that you need to be in when running those ads. Like I, yeah. I, you know, I had never even really thought of it like that. You know I mean? I kind of know, but like, I love the way you just put it about like, you know, if you're an investor, like, you know, two and a half, three times, you know, return on your ad spend, like that's good, you know? And if you're, you know, average commissions, eight grand or, you know, or some it's even higher. It's like, you really should be, you know, not, not too worried if you're spending 500 bucks, like, oh my gosh, like that's just getting started. And yeah. So, yeah. That's really cool. Really cool. Um, all right. Well, then that's great. Now I want to see too, real quick, because I know, you know, there's all sorts of tools out there. I use a ton of tools in my business, um, you know, to help like whether it's leverage or whatever. I mean, because you got basically like people leverage, right? If you're willing to hire people or you got to have like tools and create systems um, for leverage. So like, what are some of like the social media slash, you know, content type of tools that agents should be using or systems that they should be creating to help them put out consistent, high quality content that's actually gonna do something for their business. Yeah, definitely. Like it the the first thing that I think is it depends on where you're at in your business. Because I think a lot of people are trying to overcomplicate it. What they do is they say, because I don't have this certain system, I'm I'm not mm -hmm. ready to put out content. Like dude, like if you knew how I run my business, you'd be like, how the heck do you even make like a thousand dollars a year? Like I, I run my business in a very lean way where I just focus on execution and not having too much that gets in the way. Yes, I have systems and yes, I continue to add them. But if we're being completely transparent here, like I focus on just simplistic execution that I could be consistent with without cluttering everything and getting, because there's times where there's too many systems. You've got zaps going on, you've got, mm -hmm. you know, different platforms going on and it's, oh, yeah. it becomes a mess. Whereas like, dude, until I got to this point, like I basically ran my entire business off Google Drive and Google Docs. Like <laughs> it, it's, it's very simple, but yeah. I think ultimately it's less about the systems in the beginning and then we'll get to where you go at the end of that. But in the beginning, it's more about the prioritization of time. And this is a huge thing that I see anytime I'm talking to somebody where I may be coaching them on social media. The number one question that I'll ask them is say, you know, hey, Celeste, pull up your calendar right now and show me live where you have blocked off to record content this week. Mm -hmm. Every single time I've seen an agent that's not building momentum on social media, they have no time blocked off. And I said, well, when are you recording? They're like, when I find time. And I'm like, well, Never. once you let me know where you can find time, hit me up because I haven't been able to find it. Right. <laughs> so you have to block it off. It has to become a priority. And then from there, it's just, again, building it into your calendar. My simple approach to get to, I think, my first 50,000 subscribers was one Saturday I prepare, one Saturday I record, one Saturday I edit, and the next Saturday I do it all over again. Like that, and, and it all goes into Google Drive, and then I edit it, and I upload it, and I unlist it, and I go. Now, the one system I swear by, or tool, you should say, 
is vidIQ um, mm-hmm. because that has made a world of a difference for yep. uh, being able to streamline the optimization to buddy vidIQ, same thing every time. But yep. that's been that's been the thing. Now, once you get to the point where you maybe start to see a return on your content, that's when you could start to build out systems that are a bit more streamlined. Like I have a video editor, I have a, an executive assistant, I've got a virtual assistant, I've got a thumbnail designer, you know, upload, you know, record your video, upload it, and then it takes it through the whole process on something like Asana. But that yep. is something that I don't even want people to consider yep. until they've actually executed consistently. Yep. A hundred percent. Yeah. I think that that's, that's the same for me. Like anytime I've tried to make stuff like you know, better in a sense, like, because I'm like streamlining it, it ends up like biting me in the butt. Not any time. Like there's been a few systems that stick, but like, that's yeah. what I think people need to understand. Like not every system you create that you think is going to help you is going to work. Right. Like, you know, there's been a lot of them that it's like, you know, I created it and it's like, I spend days or weeks creating it. And then like, I look at it like months later and I don't even, I haven't even checked it or it's like, you know, it's like, oh my gosh, I wasted all that time thinking it was the most important thing in my business. And I had to dedicate an entire week of, you know, time to it and now I don't even use it. And so, yeah, yeah I mean, that's, that's the thing is I, I do believe that, you know, execution is the most important thing that like, you've got to prioritize the execution of the stuff, even if it means like doing it inefficiently at first, mm-hmm. you, know, you got to just execute and then keep executing. And then when you do have like, now you've executed so often that you're starting to find a little bit of efficiencies and you have a little bit of time here and there because you're more efficient. Well, maybe now you have enough information to create the time and the systems. Whereas if you try and create a system in the beginning without any execution, without any like real experience doing it, you know, you're just kind of like, I hate to say it, wasting time. Like you're, you're just <laughs> trying to like fill the time that you should be doing other things, you know? Man, like the, the best example that I can ever give people is Suman in my group. So Suman in his first year did uh, 67 million, 87 deals. And in his second year, he did $85 million. He did 114 deals. He still edits his own videos. He still designs his own thumbnails on Canva. And he did 114 deals last year while doing two, three videos a week. And these are like 20 minute property tours that he's like, if he can do that, I don't see anybody having an excuse to not be able to do it again. It's, and, and there's a lot of value in that because like, since I did all of my own editing and my thumbnail design, and I'm a mm-hmm. practitioner of this for so long, mm-hmm. I'm a huge advocate of knowing enough to be dangerous because now when you outsource it, you can tell the person that you outsource for video editing or thumbnail design, hey, this is how it should look, not how you did it. Like you can actually give constructive feedback because you've done it. You've become a student of it. You know enough to be able to call BS or in order to make calculated improvements. But if you've never done it and you're just looking to outsource from day one, you don't know what's good, bad or ugly. So a lot of agents fall victim because they outsource it on something like Fiverr, but they don't even know what good work is. So they, so then they end up putting out all this content, all this time that never converts because they never were a student of the game. And I think there's a lot of value in earning your stripes um, when looking at creating these systems of content in itself. I agree. I agree. And I think that that's part of it is like, you know, it, you have to have like a passion for whatever it is that you're going to do, like whether it's YouTube, whether it's Instagram, like for me, like, I, I'll be honest, like, I'm not super passionate about like Instagram and these things. That's why like, I don't do it that much. Like I, I'm, I'm passionate about blogging and YouTube, like, and that's where I spend my time and attention. And, and I don't mind going down rabbit holes, trying to learn things about those platforms because it's exciting to me. Like I, I enjoy yeah. it. And so I do become like a master of that craft. And so I think you know, you have to start as an agent, like figuring out like, what are you passionate about? Like, what do you like to do? What do you enjoy spending time with? And like, go down that route, because if you really do enjoy it, then yeah, it won't, it won't seem like work that you have to learn that stuff. And so, um, because you do need to learn it, like you said, I mean, you cannot like, everybody just wants to pay somebody, even if you've got the money, you want to pay somebody or whatever. It, It doesn't really work like that. I've known so many people that like, they just try and like, solve problems by throwing money at it. And, and usually, in in most of those cases never ends up being any better. And so no, and and I see a lot of people like I've even had agents from organization that you know, didn't want to take the time to learn optimization. So they hired on Fiverr. And then you go look at their analytics, like two months later, and this is not to be like a negative thing. But like, a lot of their followers are from like Bangladesh or India or some other place like that, because they're using like Telestream to have like, they're giving you these fake views in order to make it seem like they're doing a good job. But those views are never going to be potential buyers or sellers. So when you look at this, if you don't know how to do it yourself, you can't call the BS on that. So there is inherently a lot of value. And I think, you know, this even goes toward 
agents creating content for the wrong, the wrong audience. I think that's another issue um, and a huge trend that we could talk about related to 2023 is, mm -hmm. are you even creating the right content? Because when we start looking at this, buyers and sellers might make up 1% of the population. Well, when you look at agents, they're usually creating content for 1% of the population. But what about the 99% that will be buyers and sellers in the future that just aren't yet? That's mm -hmm. like doing lead generation, cold calling, door knocking, paid ads, whatever you're doing and saying, unless you're ready to buy today, I'm not even going to call you as a, as a potential lead. <laughs> but you know that 95% of leads are going to convert after 6, 8, 12 months. Yep. So the same thing goes for content, but they're not thinking about it like that. Like, yes, you could put out your content about the reasons to move to San Antonio or cost of living in San Antonio, community tours, property tours, like that is a necessity. But do not shy away from the content that I refer to as is local shareable content by the general public. Because a lot of people don't even consider this, which is like, for example, there's all these Instagram pages and stuff in my city and every city where it's like, hey, here's the top five, you know, hidden speakeasies you didn't know about in Calgary, or here's the top five attractions you didn't know about in San Antonio, or here's the best place to go for lunch to the top three. Like if I, if that was posted by a realtor, and I wasn't in the market to buy or sell, but I saw that I would still share that post with my pit, with my parents, mm -hmm. with my sister, with my girlfriend, with anybody and be like, Hey, have you seen this? Like, you yeah. know, I, I haven't heard about these. We should go, but I'm not even interested in buying or selling right now. But that now yeah. got a whole group of people yeah. in front of this realtor that just shared something that I didn't know about. It's not related to buyer selling, but now I know who they are. And if yep. they continue to put out cool content that I'm interested in, guess who I'm going to think about when the time comes to buy or sell or invest. And a lot of agents are missing like 99% of the opportunity because they're only creating content for bottom of funnel, but that's the smallest portion of the audience that we should be targeting. And yep. I think during this time, like what's going to happen now is as you know, being a broker and being somebody that has run a business for extensive amounts of time, like the magic as the market turns is not the people that are looking to buy or sell today. It's the ones that are going to make a move once the market starts to turn around in a more positive direction. Well, yeah. if you're not in front of them, who are they going to work with? Whoever's in front of them at the time. Thank so you. why not get in front of them now, nurture them for the next 18 months. And then when things get exciting again, you're the one they think about. Yeah, for sure. I mean, that is the hardest thing I think for, for agents and for just you know, most humans in general is delayed gratification, right? Like, you know, it's like that idea that I'm going to put work in today and spend my hard earned time and money on creating something today, but it may not pay off for two years or something, you know, it's like, it's that long-term thinking. And, and I really do believe the people who win at this game have that long-term ability to think long-term and, and, you know, and if you're like, oh, I just, you know, I need to make a buck today, you know, I, I hate to break it to you, but this business may not be for you. Like it's, it takes, yeah. takes time to, to create a business of real estate, right? Like, you know, to really to create any business, but especially real estate, because you know, the, the buy cycles and sell cycles are so long. It's not like we're just selling a, you know, $5, whatever hot dog or something you know it's like you know people people it takes time and so so it's going to take you time as a new agent to get get going and so i think the the more that you can think like you just uh explained about you know you got to reach the 99 percent. and the cool thing about that too is then it allows you to create content around something that is maybe more you know near and dear to your heart like yeah. especially if you're a new agent you're like well i don't even feel qualified yet to explain real estate topics well cool have you lived in your area for a while explain yeah. that right do you like a certain you know niche or a hobby or something explain that right like and just like try and be helpful and then like you said a percentage of those people are eventually going to want to buy or sell and they'll look to you because you've been the, the most helpful person. So love it, man. Very cool. Um, awesome. Yeah. We got Celeste. She says so smart. Uh, I agree. I agree. I was so smart. Um, cool. Well, yeah. One of the things that I want to talk about can't, can't be in 2023 and not talk about this right now, Mike, and you've done a video on it. I think I've done a video on it. AI, you know, it's here to stay, you know, there's chat GPT, there's like, you know, what is it? Uh, what's the one with the vi the, the images? Um, oh, yeah. Mid journey. I mean, there's a bunch of them, right? Like, and so uh, Dolly and all these different things, right, that are out there now. And I think they're only going to get bigger and, you know, more powerful potentially and like uh, allow agents to do more and more things. W what are your thoughts first off about AI? And, um, you know, and how are you using it? Let's just let's start there. Yeah, definitely. Thoughts, incredible. I think it, it's 
it again, it's an alleviation of excuse. Um, and I think as you could start to look at these platforms for saving time, and as you and I talk about all the time, it's like, how can we create leverage, right? This is massive leverage. This is something that saves you extraordinary amounts of time that does a pretty good job with a caveat being pretty good. Um, and I think it's something that, again, is, is wildly useful for agents, especially agents that are always using that crutch of not knowing what to record, not knowing what to say, like, you know, the ways that you're applying it to the, the ways that I apply it is, okay, like, write out the five reasons why somebody should move to San Antonio, right? You can even write, like, I wrote this in my YouTube video, which is like, please write an eight minute YouTube video script for a real estate YouTube channel, explaining the five reasons why somebody should move to San Antonio, Texas. Well, it's going to give you a eight minute video script for yep. five bullet points. Like, you have no excuse not to know what to say. Um, and I think the the ways that we're using it are to streamline ideas, thoughts, kind of bullet points, things that are going to be in principle pretty accurate. But then again, the really important aspect to understand about AI is that it does not replace your personality. And knowing that we're in a relationship-based business, if you put out these incredible blogs, like when I read your blogs, I know it's you. Like I, I know you, I know the blogs are a reflection of you. Like it's very easy to see that your touch has been put on that. Right. And the same thing with our content. But if you're just using these blanket, you know, uh, excerpts that come from ChatGPT or any of these other platforms, it's going to be a misalignment with who you are and your personality type. Not to mention when we start looking at like, for example, you with blogs and, and maybe me more on the YouTube side, like mm -hmm. if you write a YouTube script, like I look at the script and the bullet points are pretty damn good. The, the intro and outro are within reason doable, but right. there's no hook. There's no call to action. There's no personalization. So if you just toss that into a teleprompter, you're going to sound like a robot. And yep. You know, same thing with blogging. Like, it doesn't understand the algorithmic power of certain keywords and how the algorithm's working and, you know, different clusters of blogs yeah. that all inter... Like, it doesn't get that. So I think I like to use AI to get 90% of the way there, right? Yeah. Like, we're using it right now to write out things like lead magnets and free guides, like buyer's guides, seller's yeah. guides, social media guides. Get in 90% of the way there and then put your own spin on it. Whereas yeah. before you had to do 90% of the work mm -hmm. and somebody like a copywriter would have to put their spin on it. Well, yep. now you reverse that, which creates 90% leverage or nine times leverage. So I think that's really good. Again, I've seen many examples where you've been able to have videos more or less edited, but that's not fine tuned yet. There's a lot of applications that I think are coming. I just urge people not to wait until it comes. Because I think a lot of people are saying, well, you know, I know AI is going to be editing videos or designing thumbnails. So once it gets to that, like, no, like by that point, there's agents that are absolutely crushing it and, yep. you know, beating you in your market. So I think it's great. I want people to use it. I implore people to use it, but use it in a very mindful way and understand that it's not a perfect blanket fit for every situation, but rather an application that will create leverage that will get you 90% of the way there. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I mean, I can't tell you the amount of times that like I sat in front of like a blank page and it's just like, I mean, when you start from like from nothing, it takes you so long. Whereas like that is such a yeah. huge power to like at least not start from nothing. Right. Like and like you said, I completely 100 uh, percent agree. It is not a copy paste thing. Like I would not want to use it in that way, even if it like, you know, even if it was great, like like. It, it, because even right, like, you know, it's good right now, you know, there's definitely a lot of limitations, like some things that I found that falls short of, but even if it was great, I still think, especially for like what you said, this business, you got to have your spin. So no matter what, it's never going to be a hundred percent. Like you got to have some percent, but, but even 10% can make it you, right? Because you're the one kind of curating it. And even now, like, it's kind of powerful. Like you can actually like take something you've created, you know, paste that in there and be like, Hey, take this, but you know, make this article based off of that. Or, you know what I mean? You can do cool yeah. things like that. So then you can start to have your, your spin and your take on it. Um, so that is awesome. But yeah, I mean, it's one of those things for sure that I think it's only going to get more powerful. I I'm excited to see the video editing side. I haven't heard much about that or seen like the videos that may come yeah. from that just yet. Um, is there a particular company or some something that you're looking at for videos that that's on the <laughs> AI side? I saw a video on YouTube that is doing like, They'll basically do it right now for you. But there's a caveat to that, which is why I don't recommend anybody using it. And the reason being is because it will not remove duplicate 
verbiage. So what I mean by that mm -hmm. is if I'm, you know, if I'm, it'll cut out all the dead spots. It's actually really cool. Like it will zoom in, zoom out and make it like a bit more interactive instead of just like one frame. So it's really cool. But if I'm saying something like, you know, today we're going to be talking about the cost of living in San Antonio, Texas. The first thing, and I mess it up and I say, the first thing is X, Y, and Z. It won't remove the first time mm -hmm. I said the first thing because it removes the, the spots where you messed up, but it doesn't remove the spots that are duplicate. So it's one of these things where oftentimes like the way that I record my content is I'd never stop the camera. Yep. And if I, if I mess it up, I just re say that thing in the way that I'd like to say it, Same. it would botch everything. So yeah. it's getting there. I yeah. know it's going to come, but it's still not at the time where I would, you know, I could consciously okay. recommend somebody exploring it yet. Yeah, I, I agree. Yeah. I mean, I do. And that's the thing too, for people, if you are on YouTube, you got to know, and you, you've got, you know, Mike Sherrard here, you got myself here. I screw up all the time on, oh, yeah. on my YouTube videos, man. Like, I don't know about you. I actually, I, I do know, cause I watched, it was like the funniest reel. I think it, it made my day on Instagram. One of these days you were like, you're showing like the back end of it. You're like, ah, oh, I screwed up or something. You were like, I forget oh, yeah. what it was. It was like the funniest uh, reel you put out. I think that I thought, but uh yeah, I mean, dude, we screw up all the time. And so, yeah, that's just one thing for, you know, if, if you're an agent watching this, you're like, yeah, but, the, you know, they, they got it all put together. You see like the final edit and you're like, okay, well, that looks really good. But like, you don't know what it looks like to get there. So, uh, oh, wow. no, like my editor, like he, cause his name's Sid and like, I'll, I won't swear on here, but I'll be like, oh, like whatever, Sid. And like, sorry, Sid, like I'll get back and like, I'll like talk to him as if he's the camera because yeah. I know he's editing it. And I'll yeah. just like, he has a time editing these because I'll just get <laughs> livid in this room. Like, why can't I, after like the eighth video back to back, you're like, why can't I get a word out? Um, <laughs> yeah. And it's, it's, it's funny. Like you have fun with it. Um, yeah. but that's the thing people don't say. Like I did that one time for the Red Shea organization that I have is, is I actually looked and I edited an introduction for one of my videos live in front of the whole group. And they and then I, I showed them first the YouTube video and then I showed them the raw uncut footage and they were all like <laughs> laughing like hysterically. I'm like, yeah, that's the reality of it. So like don't be so hard on yourself, right? Yeah. For sure. For sure. I love it, man. Well, very cool. Well, Hey, I want to give some time to the audience here. Cause we do have a lot of people tuned in. Uh, I think we have had, we have over like 50 people live right now uh, as we speak. And so uh, we've had people come in and go. And so it's pretty crazy, but uh, I think it's the, big, the biggest one we've had so far. So, uh, but uh, I want to give the audience the time to, uh, you know, ask some questions to you, Mike. And I know we've already got a few questions in there. So we'll start with those. Um, but for anybody who's tuning in right now, if you've got a question for Mike um, and you want to ask him, we will go ahead and pull up your question on the stream here and uh, and get to it live. So uh, real quick, we're going to start. It says with uh, we got Mikasa in Florida. Could the YouTube algorithm be negatively affected um, if videos are in two different languages? It's a great question. Um, we've had people do both now. In a perfect dream scenario, if you have the diligence to be able to be consistent on two channels, it is ideal to split it into two. But for example, like there's an agent in Vancouver that I know that does his in uh, um, in English and, and Mandarin, um, and he just segments it by playlists. He crushes it. He's a you know mega hundred million dollar year producer, and I think ultimately it's not going to hinder it too much. It's just understanding that you're not going to get as much engagement as you would if you split it on the two because half of your videos, people might not understand them because it's in Spanish and, you know, they're English. So my recommendation is it's not going to totally botch your channel. It's not going to be not worth doing. If you could do it consistently on two, wonderful. If not, I fully support just splitting into two different playlists, having one in English, one in Spanish, Portuguese, Hindi, Punjabi, whatever, um, and separating it. But it's not going to be something where you put it out in two different languages and YouTube is suddenly like, I'm not pushing your videos to anybody. That's not going to be the case. Yeah, I agree. 100%. Great question. Great question. Let's see. We got uh, Brittany says, any specific chat GPT uh, apps that you'd recommend to somebody just starting to explore this? Real estate related, of course. Yeah, definitely. So let me uh, uh, pull this up here because I, I actually use one that's super, super powerful. So mm -hmm. um, I'm going to pull this up as we're talking here um, and kind of go through this because there is one that I use that is absolutely 
life changing. Um, so let me go through this, and it is called AIPRM. AIPRM. Okay. And basically, what this does is, you'll see when you when you look at it, like I'm looking at it right now, you've got something where it actually changes the home screen of ChatGPT. So like I'm looking at it right now on my screen, and I see like one of the options is YouTube Script Creator. So it now knows that this specific prompt is specifically for a YouTube script, you're able to then put a prompt and it'll write it more in that tonality. The next mm -hmm. one beside this, write a best smart article, best to rank number one on Google. Now this is the craziest part. I could literally take one of Kyle's blogs, toss it, toss the link into there, and it will rewrite a blog that is more or less likely to rank close or around Kyle's blog from day one. That's so cool. it's a really cool kind of platform that just allows you to go a little bit more niche. Now you're not just writing a blanket saying, hey, write a blog. It knows it's for a blog. So it'll write it with that in mind. So that's the only one that I've used, um, but it works incredibly well. I love that. Yeah, that's awesome. I'll have to check that. I haven't even heard about that. AIPRM PRM. for anybody yep. that hadn't heard that. AIPRM. Free Chrome extension. Yep. Yeah. That brings up a good point. You know, some people might think like, you know, get nervous about the whole AI and like, oh, like, you know, duplicate content, all this kind of stuff. I, I think that just means more that you as a, as a personality need to stand out, right? Because content is going to start getting like, you know, there's going to be so much, right? Like, cause like, it's just going to get so much out there content. So you, you really got to do something. It's one thing to use the tool, but what you, you have to do is you, like we said earlier, you have to stand apart from, you know, that with your personality, you got to do something um, and reach the, and, and you don't have to be somebody you're not, you have to be exactly who you are and just let the people who, you know, reside, who, who, you know, uh, relate to you, let them find you and be, you know, your audience. Like that's all it is. And so, yeah, yeah dude, like, you know, I, I can't echo that enough because like there's there's AI right now that like because your camera is off to like one side. So like sometimes you look to the side. Mm -hmm. There's AI now that will make make it look like your eyes are looking straight, make it look like you're looking straight even when you're looking sideways. Yeah. And people are like, oh, my God, this is so incredible. Like, let me use this so I can look over here at like my script. But it looks like I'm looking at the camera. And like my response to that is why are you so lazy? Why not just get good at recording and knowing what you're talking about and look straight at the camera? Like, yep. why are you looking for fixes that are making you lazy and complacent from learning the skill set that you need? Because it's like, you're not going to be in the middle of a listing presentation and the seller's straight in front of you and you're looking over here talking to the seller about your listing yeah. presentation. You're like, you're looking <laughs> at them, right? Like, don't, don't use these as a crutch to be lazy or inauthentic. Yep. Use it as a tool that saves time and creates leverage. And yep. I think like you're talking about, you look at any of the people that become well-known bloggers or YouTubers, like there's a million other people putting out the exact same content, but their personality is what makes it unique. Just yep. like I had a call with an agent yesterday and he's like, Mike, you know, I live in, in this market in the States in Texas. And he's like, there's so many other agents on YouTube putting out content. Mm -hmm. Like, how can I stand out? I'm like, well, look at your experience. Look at how you look, look at your personality. Like, I know the people that are in your market that are doing YouTube. You're drastically different than all of them. There's a million people that put out my videos, but why do some watch me or some watch you? It's all depending on the personality. And I think people need to not get so caught up in that. Yep. A hundred percent. Um, let's see here. We've got, uh, oops, somebody just says, can you provide that website? The, the website I looked it up. It looks like it's a, a Chrome extension, right? Yep. So yeah, it's a Chrome extension. So it's not necessarily a website. You'll go just type in a as an Apple I as an ice <laughs> PRM. Um, and then, um, and then you'll see the first thing that pops up is a Google Chrome extension it says AI PRM for chat GPT. And you'll want to mm -hmm. download that. Um, cool. Uh, all right. Uh, we've got another question here. We got Daniel Dawson says, uh, what video editor software, uh, do you use or does your video editor use, I guess in this case? Yeah, definitely. So in the beginning, I used until I had, I think, 20,000 subscribers, I edited all my own videos myself on iMovie. Um, mm -hmm. I still, if I'm doing a collab video, sometimes if I don't want to wait, I'll just crank it out on iMovie myself. Um, it's it's free. It's easy. Like, you know, whatever. Um, not like my video editors use software like, you know, Premiere Pro is what they all use Adobe Premiere Pro mm -hmm. um, because it's, it's really powerful. You can do different, you know, levels of things, but you don't need that. 
at yeah. all. Like, no. use what's free. You use what's don't easy. Want that if oh, just, if, because dude, it's so confusing. Like, I've gotten in there and I'm like, oh no. <laughs> I I downloaded it like years ago, and I looked yeah. at this. I'm like, what foreign <laughs> language is this? Again, it's not. Even though it can make the videos look better, like, dude, I've tried so many things. Like, I've tried the craziest editing content. I've tried so many things, and the content that works the best is just the most authentic, genuine easy to watch content that isn't done over the top. It's not the craziest editing. It's just genuine value that is relatable. Like it doesn't need to be complicated. For sure. For sure. Very cool. Um, all right. We've got, let's see, chosen one says, if you would give advice for a startup agent, uh, what would be your advice? Yeah, great question. A couple of different things. So number one is going to be living by the principle, which is if it's not in your calendar, it doesn't exist. You need to live by your calendar and you need to prioritize things based on getting clients. Like that is an agent's job in the beginning. Like, for example, I get this all the time. Well, Mike, I'm a new agent. I need to learn contracts. I need to look like you don't even need to care about contracts. You don't even have a client. Like I figured out contracts after I got my, cause I got my first listing, two listings the night I was licensed. I've never even seen a contract before, <laughs> but your goal is to get clients. Like don't worry about the next shiny penny. Don't worry about overcomplicating it. Don't worry about being on every platform. Worry about prospecting, getting in front of clients, letting everybody know you're an agent and not being a secret agent. But the next level to that, which is, I think, really near and dear to my heart, especially since this topic is more or less on social media, is you need to understand, as Kyle alluded to, that social media is, in essence, a delayed gratification approach. Mm -hmm. I see all kinds of agents like whining and complaining, Mike, I'm six months in, I have no deals, but I put out X amount of videos. I'm like, you haven't done anything. Like, at the end of the day, if you need business now, which every agent does, you need to offset the time it's going to take for your content to build momentum by, by pairing it with proactive prospecting, right? Whether it be cold calling, door knocking, networking, hosting events, tending network events. I think if we could summarize it, my biggest advice to a startup agent was the advice that I gave to myself as a startup agent, which is I wanted to look back at the end of my first year and be able to put my hand on my heart and say, Mike, there's nothing more you could have done this year to build momentum. Yeah. Like nothing. So there's no stone unturned, right? A lot of agents are saying, well, I only want to do this. Great. Then get out of real estate. If you want to go do that, go do something else. Like your mentality should be, I will do whatever it takes. So in my first year, I door knocked, I cold called, I ran Facebook ads, I put out YouTube videos. I was active on Instagram. I went to events. I hosted monthly events and I like every stone was turned and that's why i was able to build momentum and after about six to eight months of doing that you find based on what gets measured gets managed you mm -hmm. find what works best and then you can start to hone it in but in the beginning like go full tilt do it all and just make sure that it's prioritized in your calendar because if you really boil it down if you put three hours of prospecting into your calendar every day seven days a week or five days a week, if you put one hour of market research, researching your market data, looking at the analytics of, you know, listings, list of sales price, inventory, days of market, all that, becoming a student of the game. Mm -hmm. If you take another hour to do like client outreach, where the average agent of my organization that's crushing it has a goal of connecting with at least 10 people a day in any way, shape or form. If you do that in within five hours and you pair maybe two hours every couple of days for content, Within five hours a day, you could build a top producing first year business. The yeah. difficulty is a lot of agents are chasing a million things that they don't even need to care about, like learning about freaking drip campaigns on KV Core <laughs> when they don't even have a lead. Like, yep. who cares? Figure yep. it out later. Yep. Agreed. Agreed. Well, cool. Well, here, I know we got, we could probably sit here and have questions all day, but uh, <laughs> one of the things that I do want to maybe just end on is kind of maybe just like, what are you looking forward to uh, this year? You know, whether it's yeah. you know, just in your business, but also just, you know, in general in real estate, like what are some things that, that you're excited about for 2023? Man, I'm, I've been waiting for this year. Like I'm so excited because, you know, when, when I got started in real estate in 2017, Calgary is all oil and gas based. That's why I was an engineer, you know, in 2017, our city lost a hundred thousand jobs out of a working population of 600,000 people. Like, wow. so when I got started in real estate, the the uh, the data was 27% of listings were selling. 
Think about that. Like everybody's all in a flap right now because like 98% of listings are selling, not 100%. And they're like, oh my God, like, you know, the world's upside down. 27% of listings were selling. And that's what allowed me to build massive momentum because I knew that similar to what you're seeing, I'm shocked right now that you're even seeing this, but people are getting all in a flap about the markets changing, interest rates, they're all scared. And what happens is people either mentally or physically check out. They physically check out because they removed their license because they wanted to get in when things were, you know, a gravy train. Right. Or they mentally check out because everybody's talking about things going upside down and belly up and that it's going to be so difficult for agents and buyers aren't going to have commission anymore and this is going to happen and whatever. Like, so I love it because it just opens the doors for anybody that has consistent, diligent work ethic and discipline. If you have this, like, I'm going to go out on a limb and say 75% of the agents right now have completely removed themselves from the battlefield physically or mentally. Mm -hmm. So you're competing against 25%, not a hundred percent. Like Agreed. now this year is the easiest year to build momentum. You could have had a terrible past two years. And if you go all in this year, while everybody else is complacent or whining or complaining about whatever, like you have a life changing opportunity this year to buckle down and build momentum. So when things come back on the other side, you're going to be crushing it. So I love this because it's like separation season while everybody else is, you know, whining, go all in. And this is, this is the time to, to really separate the gap and build your business of your dreams. Dude. I love that, man. It's just, yeah, it's all about your perspective and you know, like what you, what you're putting inside your head, you know, and I know you're, you are very like the people you follow, like the podcasts you listen to. Like, I mean, I, I, I kind of know just from like when we've talked, <laughs> it's like, dude, you, you fill yourself, your, your mind just with like, it's up to you. Like, you know, it's your commitment, like, you know, and it's, it's all this type of stuff. And so like all the, all the things that people are consuming is going to dictate like whether they have a good year or not. Like if you're surrounding yourself with people who are, you know, other agents who are negative, who are, you know, not, you know, not doing what they need to do in their business or, or if like just news, if you're not like constantly like pouring into yourself, positive things, like this is going to be a very difficult time for agents. But for those that are, are positive, I agree with you, man. Like, you know, I got started in 08 and it's like, yeah. you know, that was like the worst time you get started for most people. Right. Like I knew a lot of agents that, you know, they got out of the business, they were making three, four, 500 grand, you know, in 06, 07. And then they were like, they were out of the business within a couple of years because they just couldn't, they didn't want to do it anymore. And I was like, yeah. For me, I was like, man, granted, I was also just coming out of college. So if I would have made 40 grand, I would have been happy. Right. So like I, it was all, but it was, again, it was all perspective. And so, um, you know, but I think that's what it is. You right now, you need to force yourself to have a good perspective or else you will be out of this business. Um, yeah. but as an opportunity side of it, if you can make sure that you're just showing up every day, putting in the work, taking action, um, this is going to be a great market. I mean, it, it can be a good market for, for, for anybody, depending on what you think of it. So love I that. I love it, man. Like yeah. I, I literally just hired a new VA yesterday and they've got three years of experience with the EXP onboarding KV core, the virtual world, like everything, because yeah. they're working with an agent. And the first thing to cut when people get all, you know, scared and concerned are their expenses. So now yeah. you're able to hire talent for cheap. Yep. You're going to find video editors, graphic designers, virtual assistants, executive assistants for a penny on the dollar because yep. they're getting removed from all the people that are, you know, don't have the right mindset. Agreed. Agreed. Well, cool. Well, thank you guys. I really appreciate you, Mike, you know, for coming on to the, to the call and for all of you guys who tuned in, who had great questions, you know, thank you so much. If you got some value out of this video, be sure to give the video a like. And if you're not already subscribed to the channel, make sure to hit that subscribe button. And by the way, while you're at it, go over to Mike's channel as well. And uh, if you're not already subscribed over there, which I'm sure a lot of people already are, but if you're not, you better go over there uh, and subscribe to his channel. He's got tons of content. He's constantly putting out new videos. Um, and so, but yeah, and, and then if somebody does want to connect with you any further, Mike, uh, what would be, you know, the best way to do that? Yeah, definitely. So, you know, the easiest option is hit me up on Instagram. I respond to any DM that I get and, and pretty active there. Um, and then again, similar to, to, you know, what Kyle and I also deeply appreciate is comment on this video, comment on any of my videos, and and we reply to 100% of comments. And, and I love to see, you know, what people like, what they don't, and, and how we can cater both of our content to better serve you and be of more value to you. So engage with this video. If you want to come over to my channel and toss a comment on the next video that you like, um, I appreciate appreciate that. But if anybody wants to get in touch, just hit me up anytime. 
Awesome. And like Mike said earlier, we actually have a video where we we flip the the roles, we flip the script here, and uh, it'll be coming out on his channel here in about uh, a week or two. And so, you know, stay tuned for that. Uh, you'll be able to see kind of Mike doing the interviewing uh, from that side. So, but uh, thank you again so much, Mike. It was great getting to catch up. I know, you know, this will be hopefully one of many, you know, I'd love to do this more more frequently with you as well. Um, but, you know, wish you the best of, of all that you're doing here this year in 2023. And uh, we'll catch up again soon. You bet. Thanks so much, guys, for tuning in. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.